Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a rendered plan drawing in Rhino. In this video we're going to look at how to create a plan drawing that showcases both the line work and the rendered shadows of our structure within our plan drawing. To do this I'm going to be using this 3D model here and we're going to begin by creating a clipping plane to cut this model where I want my plan to be. To do this we're just going to type in clipping plane into our command line draw out a rectangle and it doesn't have to be on the model it can be adjacent to it like so and you can see there it's now clipping that model now I'm going to move this up to its exact location I want to be and to do that I'm going to select the clipping plane make sure my gumball is turned on and just drag that blue arrow upwards in order to kind of clip the model exactly where I want it and for this I kind of want to show a little bit of what's happening in this space while also cutting through this roof structure here now what I'm going to do for this is we're going to create both a line work drawing of this by using the make 2D command and then also a render drawing showcasing the shadows of this object on the ground. To do this we're actually going to set up our own display mode to show these shadows. The reason for that is if we just go on here and click on the rendered mode by default you'll see the shadows are quite vague at first and also what will happen is when we introduce a clipping plane it actually cuts off part of the model which would cause a much larger shadow. You see if I turn this off here we've got this quite tall spire in our model and I want that to cast a shadow on the ground even when the model is being clipped. So to do that we're going to need to create a custom way of viewing this model to ensure that the clipping planes don't cut off any particular shadows. Now before I begin I'm going to make my shadows a lot sharper and a little bit more kind of specific to this view because you can see they're quite vague at the moment. The reason for that is we've got something called the skylight turned on. So in order to make those shadows sharper I'm going to go up to the render panel. We're going to go and make sure our current render is set to legacy Rhino render. This will make it a little bit faster and it will give us those nice kind of strong graphic shadows that I want for this particular view. Then we're going to go to render properties here. We're going to scroll down where it says lighting and we're just going to turn on the sun and turn off the skylight like so and hit OK. You can see there that my shadows are a lot sharper now but we're still getting them cut off. You can see as I move my clipping plane up we're actually revealing more of that shadow as we go. The shadows are also quite blurry. You can see they're not very well defined in here and we're going to need to sharpen those up for our particular image. So let's just move this back down to where we need it and we're going to create our own custom display mode in order to kind of view these shadows a little bit more accurately. Now to do this we're first going to go into the top view so we can see the model in the top view and we're going to make sure my clipping plane is also turned on in this top view. You can see if I put it on rendered it's not actually being clipped at the moment. To do that we need to select the clipping plane as I'm doing on the left here then in the properties panel we're just going to click on the top mode to ensure that it's being clipped. You can see there as I turn it on and off you can see the view being clipped there. Now in order to make sure that my shadow isn't being clipped as you can see what's happening here we're going to make our own display mode and to do this we're going to click on the little drop down arrow by our top here and go down to display options. Under display options we're going to click on the display modes tab here and we're going to take that rendered mode that's already set up and we're going to create a copy of it just by going down to the copy button here and clicking copy. There you'll see it's created a copy of that rendered mode and I'm going to rename that to rendered plan so I remember which one it is. Once I've done that I'm just going to hit OK and we're going to go back into our top mode and you'll see now that we've created that we've got a new option called rendered plan here that we can choose and I'm going to switch this view to that rendered plan view. Now you'll see there won't be any particular difference at the moment because we haven't actually tweaked any of those settings but it's now set to rendered plan instead of the rendered mode. What this now means is I can go back to the display options and we can start to tweak some of these rendered plan settings in order to kind of tweak how they look within our viewport. We're going to start by scrolling down under the render plan option under objects and in here you can find a clipping plane settings. Under clipping plane we can start to tweak how the clipping plane looks when we're using it on our objects. So at the moment we've got this kind of show fill where it will give us a fill colour for the area that's being clipped. Now by default it's set to viewport 
but we can actually set that to a solid color. You can see it's set to a dark gray there. We could have it as a bright red if we wanted, or we could set it to a kind of really dark gray there. So it's almost like a kind of black fill. You'll notice if you set it to black, it will kind of appear white. It seems to kind of neutralize it. So usually what I'll do is just have it slightly off black, like a very dark gray in order to give it that kind of black fill you might want. Um, we also have the kind of edge thickness and color which we can set so we can set that to a solid color as well and we can make that a kind of thicker or thinner line. I think for the purpose of this I'm going to set it to a thickness of zero actually or one so it's very slim um, because I'm going to overlay some line work on top of there so it's quite kind of graphic. Um, as well as this we can go down to our shadow settings and start to tweak these a little bit more. Now the main one we want to turn on is if we scroll right down to the bottom there's this little option here that says shadows ignore user defined clipping planes. If I tick that you'll see that my shadows will now ignore the clipping plane and will cast the accurate shadow as per the geometry of my object even if the object's being cut. So you can see here we're getting that kind of tower part of the geometry as well in the plane. So that's really important to tick that to ensure that your shadows aren't being clipped by your clipping plane. Another useful thing to do is up the kind of video memory usage to maximum. This will allow the shadows to be nice and sharp and you can see now that I've got the shadows that are coming through the window. You can clearly see those and all these shadows are a lot sharper. The lower that is the more blurry the shadows will be. So if you want very sharp shadows just want to up that to maximum. The other one we want is this soft edge quality. Now at the moment it's quite soft on these edges and you can see as well that the shadow isn't quite lining up with the edge of that wall. If I set this down to none it will align that shadow with the wall and sharpen up all the edges so we get really nice kind of sharp graphic shadows there as well. So once those are set I can then hit OK and there we've got our kind of shadow layer set up. And you'll see the difference between that rendered plan mode and then just the basic rendered mode there. So you can see those tweaks and how they've affected that geometry. Now what I'm going to do is we're just going to centrally frame this in the middle of my plan. You might also want to tweak the sun. You can do this just by typing in sun in your options. I usually put it on manual controls and then we can tweak exactly what angle the sun's coming in at how high or low it is in the sky as well if you want that to kind of be stronger or darker lighting there. Once you're happy with that we're then going to do two things. We're going to start by just capturing this view just by going up here, going to capture and then to file. We want to make sure that we don't have that kind of clipping plane still selected here so I'm just going to deselect that. If you kind of keep selecting objects and want to select nothing you can just type in select none in your command and it will deselect everything for your capture. So then we'll go down to capture again. I'm going to have it a relatively high resolution. Let's put it at 5000 pixels. Match it to the viewport aspect ratio and then we're going to hit OK to capture that. And I'm just going to save this out here. Once we've done that I'm then also going to select my objects. You can do that just by typing in select all, like so. And we're going to do a make 2D by typing in make 2D, making sure we maintain the source layers and we maintain that clipping plane intersection as well. And then hit OK. This will create our make 2D file, which we can see here. And I'm now just going to drag that out of the way of my kind of main view and we'll put that on a shaded viewport so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And there you can see our Make 2D. Now from there I'm just going to select that line work and we're going to export it out by going File, Export Selected and we're going to save it as an Illustrator file here. For this you can either do a snapshot of the current view if you don't care too much about the scale but if you want to preserve that model scale I'm going to do it at a 1 to 100 scale by setting it at 1 meter is equal to 10 millimeters which will mean 1 meter in my model is equal to a centimeter in my kind of drawing file which is essentially a 1 to 100 scale because this figure is a hundredth of the figure on the left. So we'll hit OK to save that out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up this line work in Illustrator to edit up our line weights and then we're going to compile that with our shadow in Photoshop. 
Once that file's open, you may find that all the line work is actually cited off the Illustrator board, and this is due to the fact that it might be kind of located off center in your Rhino file. If you want to kind of put it back to the middle, you can either do that just by selecting all the lines like this, or in Rhino, you can just center it back to the zero zero point and re export it, and it should appear in the middle of your board. Once we've done that, I'm just going to reset my document by going Document Setup and Edit Artboards in Illustrator to just resize that to the size of my drawing. You might want to set it at a particular size here. I'm not too worried for this particular one. So we'll just set it to fit our drawing here. And then we're just going to edit this line work to kind of reflect the drawing that I want. Now you could spend time kind of editing all of these lines and tidying up the line work. I'm not going to do it for this particular tutorial, but it depends on kind of the fidelity and the accuracy you want in your final plan. For this, I'm actually just going to select all of these lines and we're actually going to make them into a kind of shade of blue for this particular drawing. So we're going to do it as a kind of nice blue tone here. Let's do it something like that, like so, just to give all those lines a sort of blue color. Then we're going to make sure that all my kind of clipping plane intersection, i.e. my section lines, which we can find here just by selecting each of these, are going to be a slightly kind of darker shade. So let's just hide all of the ones that aren't those clipping plane intersections, so just by locking all of these, and then anything with clipping plane intersection in the title will leave unlocked. Then we'll select those lines. We're going to make these a sort of 0.2, and let's make them a bit darker, like so. So there you can see my line weights. Now we might want to do the opposite. I'm just going to unlock the rest of them. And we're going to just reduce that line weight as well. Let's put this down to a 0.5, it's a little bit lighter. You may want to kind of dial up and down those line weights. And it may be that certain things want to have a thicker line weight than others. So perhaps for my structure, for example, these kind of timber pieces, maybe let's do those as a slightly darker line weight. Just by selecting those, let's put those at a 0.7 as well. Once you're kind of happy with the drawing, and for this particular tutorial, I'm going to leave it here. We're then going to save this out. You can either save it as an Illustrator file or as a kind of um, JPEG where you can export it. For this, I'm just going to save it back out as an Illustrator file just directly on my computer. And we'll just call this plan line weights. Then from here, we're going to just combine this with our rendered shadow layer. So to do that, we're just going to open up Photoshop and combine those two files together. Once we have Photoshop open, we're going to begin by just opening up our plan with our line weights in our Photoshop file. And we can do that just by taking the Illustrator file and dragging it into the top bar of our Photoshop file. Here we're going to open it up, we're going to crop it to the media box. So we're going to keep the proportions the same, make sure we're in RGB color, and then hit OK, like so. And you can see it comes through with a sort of transparency behind it. I'm going to start just by making a new layer below my first layer and we're going to fill that in a kind of white fill there behind just so we can see my line work. Now to combine this with the shadows I'm going to take my shadow layer and just drop it straight on top. Now it's very unlikely that these two will line up because one is a scaled kind of plan which we took from our line weights and the other is a captured image file which doesn't have a kind of constrained proportion that's all defined by the number of pixels in the image. So you'll find that these don't automatically line up together. So we're going to have to manually align these. And this can easily be done. The best way to do this is if we sort of zoom in and find a kind of common point. And I'm going to take the corner of this piece of structure here and just align it with my line there. If you can't really see it, we can always reduce the opacity of that top layer just to line up that corner. And we kind of want this in the center point of this line, like so, so it sits in the center there. Once you've aligned that, we'll then find another common point, and I'm going to take the edge of this little ramp, which should align here. We're going to hit Control T on our keyboard to transform this area. Then we're going to select this little center point here. If this cannot be seen in your file, you can turn it on with this tick box at the top. There. And if you can't see this bar, you might need to turn your kind of workspace to Essentials Classic at the top here. So you tick on that box. We're going to move that crosshair to line up with the point that we aligned here. 
then we're going to go to the other corner we're going to hold down the alt key this time and we're just going to scale it and you'll see with the alt key held down it will scale it from that point that we've selected so it will use that as the center of our transformation and each time you might just need to zoom out a little bit check and see nearly there we can take it from the bottom bar here and i'm just holding down that alt key as i scale it until it's aligned and it's pretty much there might be a tiny tiny bit more like so and there we go there we're on and then we're just going to hit that tick box there now you can see my shadows being slightly cropped so what i'm also going to do is we're just going to extend that canvas size make it a little bit taller for this particular image so we can see that and we'll just move these two pieces down together like so then we can crop it to our kind of expected ratio that we get that shadow nicely in there like so now we've got the two of these together we can now start to edit the shadow to match our line work so it might be that we want to give it a color as well in which case i'm going to kind of add a hue saturation on there as an adjustment layer we can hold the alt key and that will clip it to that layer if you hold the alt key and hover between layers you can clip an adjustment directly to a specific layer once i've done that i can colorize this layer and we're going to turn it a shade of blue as well can up that saturation and then just up the lightness too like so then what we can do is we can actually lower that fill color down and there you've got your shadow but you've also then got the line work that's coming through and we're just going to kind of lower that down until we get a nice balance of the line work and also our shadow layer on top you can see here that my white part is just sort of not quite on so let's just scale that up to match it here like so and now it's just a case of sort of balancing the two of these up so we might want the shadow a bit darker you can always darken up your lines by adding a levels onto there doing the same thing holding that alt key and then we can darken the lines by just dragging this line up here just to darken that line work up too and once you're kind of happy with it there we have our kind of rendered plan drawing we've got our nice shadows which represent the whole structure which is unclipped and then we've got the clipped line work here as well if you wanted to add detail to this you might also want to add a fill into where that cut line is we could do that by using our kind of original sort of rendered view here and masking off that area or we could create an alternative version of that where we've got a kind of colored fill in there that we can use in between the lines as well so i hope you found this video tutorial useful in how to create a rendered plan drawing using rhino and illustrator and photoshop if you want to watch any other videos on creating drawings or renderings in Rhino, then please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.